Hello there, Taurus. Welcome to your weekly tarot reading. So uh, I believe last week's reading, I did mention that some of you are in relationships and I feel like you're getting either admiration or um, uh, attention from somebody outside your relationship. Uh, I feel there is a continuation of that same energy coming through in this spread, okay? So what I have here is the devil, and you have two cards that are repeat from both decks. So first of all, we have the devil, and then we also have here the Eight of Cups. And um, the energies are very similar, so I feel as if, you know, if this is love and this is other areas of your life, I feel like this is a relationship that's going to weigh heavily on you. You're probably meeting them in the work environment. You're thinking about them at work. You're seeing them at work. And then I feel like it's also, you know, affecting your home life and your love relationships and things like that too. So for those of you who are already in coupled relationships and um, you're getting, you know, attention outside of it, I feel like some of you are going to put an end to it. So you're not going to entertain the other person or you're not going to, um, if you're like, you know, stepping outside of the relationship, then I feel like you're going to put an end to it. Okay. Uh, which is great. And I also feel like for those of you who are not dealing with that energy, then there's a different storyline here. Um, either way, there is a person in your environment that is bringing out a lot of, um, it, they're bringing out a lot of odd feelings within you. And if your energy shows up like this, as the king of pentacles, you're very proud, you're very secure, you're very business oriented. You are someone that people come to for advice. You are somebody that, you know, uh, can offer a lot of stability. You are someone that is loyal and faithful and you care a lot about the morality. You care about doing the right thing. You care about the pleasures in life as well, but more than anything, this is somebody who's like a pillar of strength and stability. They're strategic, they know what they want. And you know, on the negative side, it could be somebody that likes to control situations. And I feel like someone has gotten you feeling out of control. So whenever you interact with them, I just feel like the energy is very unpredictable. And I feel like, you know, as well composed as you are, as, you know, calm and placid and just um, professional and, and composed as, as, as much as you pride yourself on these things this person knows how to get under your skin or this person brings out that more playful side of you or the more adventurous daring side of you and I feel like it's it's awakening something in you we have here the devil and the devil usually denotes to me when it appears next to the king of pentacles being too materialistic, being bound to something because of the financial security that it entails, being bound to something or staying in a situation that's not entirely healthy, it could be very toxic, mainly because you want the status quo, you don't, you, you fear the unknown. So it's like staying with the devil that you know, rather than venturing off into the unknown. But it's greatly about, you know, financial security, financial resources, working at a job that we don't like because we have to bring home money for the wife and the kids or the husband and the kids. Um, or being stuck to somebody that we don't care for very much because there are children, there are assets involved. And with this card, as your um, the person that you're dealing with, this seems to me like there is a lot of physical attraction a lot of chemistry with another person, wanting to own and possess the other person and really wanting the other person to ourselves. So I do see an element of control here. One person wants to control the direction of the relationship, wanting things to slow down, wanting to feel, um, wanting not to feel so flustered or so frazzled or so swept off their feet by the other person because the chemistry is really strong with the devil. It can also denote to me, once again, temptation, okay? 
temptation of the flesh, being tempted from an outside source, being tempted away from our path, being tempted away from our partner, um, temptation for strain, stepping out of a relationship, for example, that comes up too. And the person that you're dealing with, this is your partner here, Page of Wands. The Page of Wands is a young energy. So once again, um, I was getting this for another sign and I can't remember. It's the first six signs that I did. So it might have been, so either it might have been Aries, okay? So um, it might have been Aries. So this is a, a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. And this person, the communication between the two of you is very flirtatious. It's very flirtatious. And I feel like they might, um, they're trying to gauge it. It's not like, uh, you know, they're just um, going at it with you. Like, um, you know, I want to see you. I want to be there and, and things like that. They're not like that. And I feel like they're a little bit guarded. But they're trying to see what they can get. They're trying to get a rise out of you. And they're also trying to see what's my limit with this Taurus. So you're dealing with someone who's, you know, quite popular. They, they're not... The butterflies in the background indicates to me somebody who's a social butterfly. They can be very fun, very outgoing, quite popular, quite attractive, um, athletic, likes the outdoors, loves animals, loves to camp in the woods. So they're not high maintenance, you know, they're not like somebody who's prim and proper. I feel like they're, they can be a little bit rough around the edges and they know how to get under your skin, not in a bad way. But they know what makes you tick, and I feel like they have, with this, um, the letter in her hand, it's like communication that they, they like to communicate with you. And I feel a lot of it has to do, if they are a younger energy, they like to pick your brain. They like to, you know, um, ask you for advice. They like to ask you for knowledge. They like to ask you for expertise. They like to ask for your opinion about many, many, many things. So I feel like there's this element here of a paternalistic or a maternalistic um, relationship where they really want your approval. They really like you. They look up to you and they admire you. But at the same time, you know, if you show up, uh, if you come across like this with the King of Pentacles, you're skeptical. Yes, the attraction is really strong, but you're also like, I don't really trust them 100%. So the devil in between the two of you, it denotes to me really, really strong attraction. But in terms of like, what do I do with this attraction? You want to be left alone, I feel. And with the Eight of Cups, you wanting to walk away, you feeling like there's something lacking in your life. So you thrive on this connection. But I also feel like there's an element here about you not feeling 100% emotionally satisfied with this person. And you might be the one to, you know, find your way out because you care about how you are perceived. You care about doing the right thing. You care about your reputation. You care about your work. You care about your actions and you want your actions to be honorable and uh, reputable. And so you might choose to disconnect away from this connection. Um, but the bottom line is, I just feel like there's a lot of chemistry. And if those of you who are single, I feel like there's some some personal things that it, it's almost like if you're dating somebody a lot younger, some of you are very like reputation conscious. You know, if you're attracted to this person, which I feel like you very well, um, many of you are attracted to and that person. If you're attracted to them and you know they're a lot younger and you walk around with them and parading them around town I feel like some of you feel a little bit out of your element some of you feel like this person might be young and naive and they don't know what they're doing so I might be seen as the person who's taking advantage of them and then there's such a strong maternal paternalistic vibe and I feel like you see them as someone who's childlike and you don't want to, 
It's almost like you want to, you know, just scoop them up in your hands and take care of them and watch them grow rather than wanting to, you know, have a real relationship with them because you don't want to succumb to this, this devil energy. So I do see an element of possessiveness, a little bit of jealousy coming into the picture, but you're definitely dealing with somebody that's really got you, you know, very wound up. And the first card that came out here, and it's weird that I'm doing these backwards, but I, I just read whatever comes in, okay? We have here the Two of Wands. Some of you could also be in a um, relationship already, and you're blocking off new relationships, mainly to preserve, you know, that that's the stability in your own relationship. For others, there's an element of long-distance communication, long-distance relationship and waiting for the other person there's a lot of attraction there's a lot of communication as well and i feel almost like there there's a process here about being stuck to this long distance relationship and not feeling that emotional fulfillment and wanting to move on with your life focusing on other areas of your life and not wanting to be stuck or bound or tied to it anymore even though the attraction is really strong I'm going to pull out a card to clarify. What is this devil energy here? There's definitely have an air sign and a fire sign. So I feel like somebody is coming in, making an offer, and you might already have somebody else. Okay? So the fire sign might be your partner so Sagittarius Aries or Leo might be your partner and you're trying to preserve the relationship it's like you're not getting the attention from your current partner and then for others of you we have here you making the offer we have an air sign Aquarius Gemini and Libra and then we have a fire sign, Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo. So you're, you might be the one making the offer. But I feel like the, att the, the attraction is really, really strong. And I feel as well that it's really strong from your end. It's so close to you. The other person, you feel, you're, you're questioning whether or not they feel the same way as well. It's just coming out very strongly from your end. You're very uh, enamored and smitten by this person. And you feel like, if I'm feeling it like this, and you know, what if they don't feel the same way? Like, what's going to happen uh, if we get involved and I'm so much more invested in it than they are? So there's that element here of like fatal attraction, okay? In other areas of your life, there's not much. We have repeat cards. And what I have as well is um, burying yourself in work in order to escape something okay um there might have been arguments and things like that in the home front in the relationship front and you're burying yourself at work you know keeping yourself busy there's also a lot of responsibilities piling up so you're working very diligently very hard and i also feel like mounting responsibility lots of places you have to be picking up things dropping off things for people running around and you know just taking care of responsibilities um some of you could be you know doing a lot of um i feel spreadsheets so you might be, you know, very like you, you, you might be very detail oriented. You're getting all the data inputted in just correctly. And I feel like you're 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 very good at your job. You're looking at a lot of data. You're looking at a lot of spreadsheets. You're also um, fixing a lot of other people's mistakes. So this is a guy that mends things that fixes things. So this is a fixer. If your relationship sector, your marriage, your family life is not working, you're fixing things. You're constantly, you know, trying to improve. You're constantly trying to make the situation better. And I feel like it's coming in as a choice, right? Like you, you think like, okay, um, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to make it right. So there's an area in your life where you're constantly working at it. And I feel like at this point, you're doing it kind of like through muscle memory, you're not really enjoying the process anymore. So you're at a point where the same 
old routine is not really serving its purpose anymore. It's not, it, it, it feels very restrictive. It's like, you know, going to work just to earn the money, just so we can pay the bills so that we can sustain our lifestyle and the cycle repeats. And then the next day we wake up, we do the same thing. So there isn't any learning that's happening in your current work environment. And you're kind of bound to it because you feel like, oh, this is what I did yesterday. So this is what I'm going to do today. And it's also what I'm going to do tomorrow. So there is that, that predictability in the routine, but it's not really aspiring to your higher calling anymore nor is it speaking to you know your ability to grow and to find new options and to find new choices so there are a lot of at stake here where you kind of have to reassess your daily routine you kind of have to reassess your daily rhythm and you kind of have to reassess as well am i growing anymore in this relationship in this job or am i just going through the motions so a lot of the times taurus we kind of have to stop and kind of take stock at what we're doing. Is it emotionally fulfilling for me to do it anymore? And if it's not, why am I doing it? So understanding the underlying reason, is it really inspiring or is it just, you know, um, something familiar? So I feel like you've got some reassessment that you kind of need to make when it comes to work. And then I also feel there's definitely this energy about um, laying low. I, I feel like there's a toxic energy in your work environment. Um, somebody dealing with control issues, office romances, as well as, you know, wanting to kind of like avoid the home life or the troubles at home, burying yourself in work and then finding somebody that at work that you're really attracted to. But nothing comes out of it so there's a lot of just pent up frustration I'm, I'm feeling here where you're not really emotionally fulfilled and you're going through the daily grind you know just to do your job keep your head down keep things uh cordial and keep things flowing and you're doing a lot of work you're you're putting in a lot of the work in the um the situation I feel overall with the Eight of Cups and the Ten of Wands, this is like moving away from a situation, picking up the pieces of our lives so that we can start again. So for those of you who have been in bad relationships, I feel like you might also leave that, that work situation or that love relationship so that you can begin again with somebody new. And you know, those three cards came out earlier. Going off in a new direction going off in a new direction and I feel like you know the the catalyst that allows you to do that could be any of these three people somebody could make a, an offer to you possibly a, a water sign but you might have somebody else or any of these three people coming into the picture could you know be like the 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 person that you move away with mainly because you feel that it's not really whatever you have is not really serving its purpose Okay, so I hope the reading is helpful for you, Taurus, and I feel like there's a big blending of your love life, blending into other areas of your life. It's almost like questioning your love life, and then it, it in terms, open your eyes to some of the other things that you've also swept under the rug. And I feel like, you know, anytime we question where we're headed, where we're going, what are we doing, it's always like a good journey for self-discovery but i feel like for you guys especially the the first six signs the journey for self-discovery is very mandatory but it can come it can take a, a long time for you to come to the realization the latter six signs i feel like it's easier for them it's easier for them to kind of look outside of themselves and 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 you know um see opportunities and go after opportunities whereas for the first six signs it's very self-oriented so your journey starts with you know knowing yourself well figuring out what you want figuring out what you're doing if you're just you know going through the daily grind is it really serving your purpose are we all here to be you know 
um, hamsters in a wheel, right? Just running the wheels. Or do we have free choice? Or do we have options? Do we have freedom? And what ultimately should we be looking at to find that emotional fulfillment? A lot of the times it means making some changes. A lot of the times it means telling ourselves, you know, enough's enough. I'm not going to be the hamster in the wheel. I'm going to break myself free and do something different. I feel like you're not there just yet, but this is a, a week where you're starting. It's like the ball is rolling in that direction so that you can kind of see a situation for what it is. Okay. I wish you the best, Taurus. Take care. Bye-bye.